Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 5. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 8, also known as the mid-season finale. So next week we've got Crisis on Infinite Earths. This episode right at the end sets up a lot to do with Crisis, so obviously there's going to be a lot of Crisis talk in this video. And if you don't want to miss all the Crisis talk in my review for The Flash and Arrow tomorrow, please be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss any DC TV videos. So, yeah, this episode was pretty damn good. I really, really got into the episode towards the end of the episode. I thought the start was, like, pretty good. It was, like, a just, you know, a kind of average Supergirl episode that I was enjoying. I didn't really have any big problems this episode, but it got really good towards the end. And I think that was definitely because, you know, they were trying to build towards a finale-type event where you have the closure of a lot of these stories, and I think they closed it off very well. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. I have a lot of notes for this episode. There was a lot of stuff going on, obviously. Like I said, they're trying to fix it and sort of end all the stories, you know, for the most part for this season. You know, the first part of the season, I mean. Okay, so how we start the episode, we got Malafaic, and he shows up, he reveals that Lena, you know, has captured him and he didn't go to the phantom zone and we have this whole story with Malafay at this episode that I thought was really effective and I'll talk about the way he ends the episode very soon then we got the leviathan stuff at the start of the episode Rama Khan with a crater and you know they want to set off some sort of super volcano Lena's doing her stuff with Hope slash Eve at the start and you know they're trying to get ready to launch their myriad device, Supergirl goes to her headquarters, they set like a Trojan horse so they can't fire it off but in the end it does actually fire off and we'll get to that in a sec but so she has this talk and it's Lena and Supergirl, she's as a hologram and that was you know the Trojan horse thing but Kara begins to cry and this was the only bit where I was like ah, I don't know but then they sort of fix the ideology later in the episode with Alex being so right about how she was trying to protect Lena because Kara doesn't see it right now as in she didn't tell Lena because she wasn't trying to protect her. Kara during those earlier scenes kept on thinking along the lines of Lena that you know she betrayed her which she really didn't and I think it was very gratifying to see that Alex actually correcting Kara saying that you know you didn't tell Lena you were a supergirl because you had good reasons, you didn't want her to be exposed because you're a good friend. So I really appreciated that because with the hologram stuff and you know the past few episodes, Kara has been really blaming it on herself as in she is following the ideas of what Lena is saying as in she had betrayed Lena by not telling her which is not true. So you know she talks about you're a deceitful person, you mean nothing to me and Obviously, she's there as a hologram, so she can hear, but I'm not sure if she can actually see Lena, because she would have seen Hope slash Eve in that scene, and I don't know if she knew that she was there, but she gets emotional, and I think Kara is very much so caught up in Lena's ideology in this episode, but then I really like how Alex sort of set her straight, being like, no. You're not the villain, Kara. You've done this for a reason, a good reason. Also, we get a mention of Rain in this episode, you know, in the talk with Alex and Kara. Really appreciated that. Also, we know that Sam is actually returning. I think I'll make that part of my new video that I'm going to do sometime later tonight. But that was just a really nice reference because we know she's probably going to be back for the 100th episode. So basically, with the Alex and Kara talk, Alex talks about how she's treating Lena as a villain and it really creates this other side where, you know, we sort of believe in that because, you know, Lena very much so is towing the line of being a villain. She's trying to control everyone, like, against her will that is extremely villainous. She sees herself as good, just like Lex, which we'll talk about in a second, but he actually mentions that he's always thought of himself as the hero, so Lena thinks in that same ideology and Alex is the one who's treating her like a Luther, as she should be treated, because, you know, that's what she's doing right now, with something very villainous, and obviously she thinks she's a hero, but when you look at it from the outside, she's not. And by the way, for all of you Lena fans, like, I like Lena, and I'm not arguing to say that Lena's not a good character for doing this, because, you know, a good character can be evil, or a good character can be villainous, so I'm just saying with these reviews, it's obviously just my opinion as in, you know, the way that the ideology is presented, like, I think she's a villain, you may not think she's a villain, but, you know, that's 
up for interpretation and I'm not trying to shit on Lena basically. Okay, so let's move on to talk about this John and Malefic stuff. So John and Malefic, they show up, everyone's shit scared at the DEO because he's shown up, but then it's turned out that John has changed him as we saw last episode. So Kara comes to try and get John's help to stop Alex from trying to kill Lena and blowing up the place with this device that they called some funny name, I forgot what it was. Oh yeah, it was Claymore. Like, you know, like a claymore mine, like it's gonna blow up. I thought that was kind of funny. And then she realizes that they could use Malefaic. And, you know, I think at this point, Kara was thinking, oh, we can trust Malefaic. And so he's actually the one who's going to try and stop Lena from making the same mistakes that he made because, you know, he's changed now. And it turns out he has actually changed. And so Jean tries to talk Alex into believing that Malefic is good now. And so that takes a lot of pressure for Alex to actually believe that because, you know, Lena's betrayed, he's supposedly good now, she doesn't know who to trust basically, and Alex eventually trusts Jean, like, right in the last minute that, you know, we should stop the inhibitors and, you know, let him fully use his powers, that talking about Malefic in this instance. So whilst this is going on, we have the stuff with Akrata and Rama Khan. Rama Khan gets screwed over in this episode. He's trying to create this sort of super volcano explosion, but he is stopped by Jean, Supergirl, and also Akrata. Akrata stabs him towards the end of the episode. I don't know if he's going to be dead or anything like that, but he is stopped and a new Leviathan lady takes over. I don't remember her name. I don't think they've mentioned her name yet, but you know, there is someone who is in charge of the organization who is appointing this new person. And obviously this new person is going to be around in the back half of the season. Then eventually we'll get the reveal of the other members of Leviathan very, very soon. So yeah, we have Supergirl and Jean facing off against Rama Khan. Akrat is stuck underground as she tries to you know, help Supergirl, well, at least get Supergirl's assistance, you know, she doesn't have such a big thing against Supergirl, and I think they realise that the Shadow, as they call her, or Akrata, aka Andrea, is not a bad person, you know, she gets this really nice moment towards the end of the episode, talking to a hologram, like, you know, using the Obsidian thing, where she can, you know, talk to herself about, like, seeing her husband, basically, and, you know, She's finally escaped from Leviathan, essentially. And so, we have all of that going on, and it's causing shockwaves around National City. And then we've got Hope, and she somehow guesses this code to the base, and I thought that was kind of funny. That was a little bit of, like, just trickery in the writing. They were like, oh yeah, let's think of this. Oh yeah, we got ten seconds to do this. We guess the code, which is kind of impossible, I'm just saying. But, whatever, that's just like a little thing in the writing where they were like, Oh, we need to do this or else, yeah, let's come up with this, who cares. So, then we get this funny moment where I laughed because obviously I think of Lena as sort of like, not a full villain, but you know, she's definitely in that villainous area. But she says, sometimes the good guys don't win, and I out loud laughed because, you know, that's not true. And, you know, she thinks of herself as a hero, but everyone else is actually a hero instead. So I don't know what your reaction was to that bit, but that got a strong reaction out of me because I feel very much so that Lena is in the area of the villain. I know a lot of people disagree with me and that's totally fine, but yeah, tell me your reactions to that moment because it, it made me laugh because, you know, I think she's a villain or, you know, she's nearly there. And so we have Lena getting caught at the end of the episode and you know she's lost and she gets a gun out I'm thinking oh my god she's gonna shoot Hope slash Eve or she's gonna kill herself but then I was like oh no wait Lena's in next episode in crisis so what happens is Lena actually sets up Eve slash Hope because you know Hope is devoted to Lena obviously I think they're gonna find out about Hope being in control of Eve and it's not actually Eve. I think they're gonna find out sometime, you know, in the back half of the season very early on. So that Lena has, you know, manipulated her and, you know, completely changed her. So that's a villainous thing as well because, you know, she's taken over a person for her own needs. So she sets it up, it seems like Lena's fine. 
really sneaky, but Kara and Alex still believe that Lena did it, and it's not actually Eve that did it. So they know the truth, and, you know, it's not going to be the same. And even though Hope slash Eve has confessed to doing everything and controlling and manipulating Lena, and Lena will be fine, she will not be in prison or anything like that, like Hope slash Eve is going to be, you know, Kara and Alex still know that it's Lena. So that's going to continue on into the next few episodes. And so as we head towards the end of the episode, we have Kara and Lena. They're looking at pictures of themselves. It sort of fades. We see Kara on the couch. We got another couch scene. Obviously, she is full of emotion. She's sort of really sad. She can't trust her best friend. You know, she doesn't have a best friend anymore. And so we get this amazing scene, this wonderful scene with Malefaic who is going off to Mars to meet Morgan. They're going to work together. He's going to return back to Mars. He's going to try and stop the war. And so there's a mention of Pariah, which is very interesting, which links to the ending scene of this episode. But he's going to be a hero. And I really loved this ending to Malefaic. I thought it was a perfect ending. He flies off in a ship. And then we get the start of Crisis. We have Jean meeting the Monitor, saying that he has succeeded in, you know, doing this because... He saw his vulnerabilities and then he realized his vulnerabilities are his strengths. That's what the monitor said and so this kicks off the ending of the episode. He says, for the incoming crisis or something like that and I got chills. And then we see the return of Lex Luthor who is with the monitor. He's in his sort of space place, I don't know what to call it. And so he's working with the monitor. The monitor revived him, that's been confirmed. And the universe needs a mind like him. We have to discuss. My sister is how Lex ends off that scene. What is he going to do to his sister? Maybe he's going to try and get her to help. Or to spare her. Or to kill her. Because you know. She actually killed him. So I don't know what's going on there. But you know. He's going to be a hero. And try and save the earth. You know. The earth needs a mind like him. So he's going to be of some great assistance. To our heroes. So he's going to return. Then we go to the ending scene, the post credit scene of this episode. There's a lot of crisis stuff towards the end of this. It's very exciting. So we have this crisis teaser. We go to Central City on Earth 1, where we've been continuing from the Flash episodes recently with Nash Wells, the new version of Wells, attempting to get into this place. He, we saw that he broke through. He saw the signs last episode on the Flash. And so Nash tries to kill the Monitor. That has been his mission this whole time. Or is it the Anti-Monitor? Not sure, but I definitely think it is the Monitor. It could be the Anti-Monitor. More likely than not, it's not. And so someone talks back to him, and he touches the symbols. He does this combination, a light sucks him in, and he becomes Pariah. That is what's happening right there. I'm really certain of that. And it's going to be continued next week on Crisis on Infinite Earth. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I can't wait for Crisis next week. Obviously, we got the three episodes. We got Supergirl, Batwoman, and The Flash. And then after the break, we got Arrow and Legends of Tomorrow. Can't wait for it. Please be sure to subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications as we try and reach 100,000 subscribers. We are 200 subs away. Share it around. Tell people about the channel. I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.